Bill's been great. I mean, he's uh, he's a master of the big musical extravaganza uh, anyway. And, um, you know, I'd worked with him before, so I knew his style. And, you know, we spent, uh, you know, a couple of months really, you know, picking over the the text and, and just seeing how we could bring some sort of added nuances, to, particularly to the Beast, who is, um, you know, in the cartoon is a little more two-dimensional, um, you know, and slightly less kind of grrr, and a bit more human, I guess. And I think that was that was one of the interesting things for us was you know to find those little human beats um and sort of bring him slightly away from the more animalistic and actually just you know to make him a, a human trapped inside this this creature you know i suppose one of the big differences is that we don't you don't see the beast prior to uh being a beast in the in the cartoon really you don't i mean i think you see a sort of stained glass window version of him but you know there's no no real sense of of what um of what he was like and in this we have just a hint um and we see him at the ball and and i think something that bill and i were keen to sort of bring out was this sense of a, a sort of petulant spoilt child and and the sense of kind of entitledness um that that led to his downfall really and um and so that was quite fun just to kind of work into this this very short little montage, almost entirely through the medium of dance, uh, which is not something I'd done a huge amount of before. Um, but that was really, really interesting to kind of introduce that element and then see that, th you know, through threaded through the Beast's uh, story. Um, and, you know, to see him curse not just for you know having refused a rose but actually for for all his other traits that um that he could be damned for there was a, there was a couple of months there of of quite intense um it was like sort of musical theater camp really um you know singing dancing training every day um just trying to get my body in shape and that was i suppose one of the other things that we were looking at was you know who was this prince before he was a beast and one thing that we we were certain of is that he was a dancer and and quite a good dancer um unfortunately so i had to you know become quite a good dancer and um so yeah there was a lot of a lot of dance rehearsals anthony van Laas, the choreographer was extraordinary in in kind of training me up and um just you know his whole team really um working on on getting me to you know hold myself in the right way and and move in the right way and um and that really informed a lot of, of the of the prince, but also uh, the beast as well. And the movement sessions were, you know, a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, every department you just every time you walk in there, you just get a sense of the of the scale of it. I'm, my room is just along the corridor from all the makeup department, and you know, Jenny Shirkle's team. Just the number of wigs every day I walk into work, and there's literally like a corridor half a mile long, just full of jewel encrusted wigs <laughs> and um and then you come on these sets and you think oh my god you know and and um yeah every day you come in there's something epic that just you just think oh my god you know there's so much work gone into this um yeah it's quite incredible yeah well days in the sun is beautiful i mean it's um i would say it's as sort of heartwarming and and uh, and beautiful as uh tale as old as time really it's um it's got a real sort of classic feel to it and Working with Alan Menken has been quite a, quite an experience. He's quite an amazing man, um, just such a hilarious character, um, apart from anything else. But he, just every musical idea that comes out of his mouth sounds like some sort of Broadway hit. And um, so he's, uh, yeah, it's it's been really interesting just working working with him. He was in the studio for our pre-records and um, just, you know, getting right in there. And he really knows uh, what he wants. And uh, he's written me a new song, um, which is evermore, and uh, yeah, I hope people enjoy that too. <laughs> well, it's been great. Um, I guess you know I did get to meet them quite early on, as in their sort of human incarnation, which helped. So that actually, you know, before uh, I had to go in and and, and shoot with them uh, as objects, and um, and I was thinking, yeah, I'll just about you know get my head around you know you and McGregor being a candlestick. So you walk in and there's a candlestick on the table and you're talking to the candlestick. And then of course when you go to shoot the scene, they're like, oh right, now we're going to take the candlestick away and replace it with an LED light on a stick. And so it's just like an extra level of weird that you have to deal with. But you still get his voice and Ian McKellen's voice come in and Emma Thompson. And um, it was nice actually just chatting to Emma about the relationship that. The Beast has with Mrs. Potts because obviously she is um, as close as he has to a sort of mother figure really she's a bit like his 
sort of like a strict aunt or something, which sort of kind of keeps him in line, keeps him in check. And it was nice to to sort of chat about that and establish that, you know, between ourselves. And then, you know, obviously she's nowhere near, and it's just a teapot on the day. But um, I do I do think of Emma every time I look at that teapot, which helps. <laughs> she's been great. I mean, it's um, it's you know such a such a close relationship that, and um, you know, it was something. I was very keen to do was to kind of calibrate the beast according to the the bell that she wanted to be and to play and um you know so we spent a lot of time together uh, early on just talking about you know beauty and beastliness and men and women and masculinity and femininity and and sort of good and evil and 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 all these sort of polar opposite things I suppose and um you know trying to work in some of those things and um and ultimately realizing that the the tale is not so much about you know, an, an ugly thing and a beautiful girl, but actually about, you know, the, the, the beauty and the beastliness in all of us and, and um, sort of two sides of, of people and, um, and learning to sort of, learning to live with that balance, I guess. And um, she's a very, very interesting girl and very intellectually engaged with, with the, the fairy tale and the story. And um, that just makes for, you know, a much richer working experience, really. Um, and I hope that that kind of, you know, infuses all of our scenes, really. Josh Gad is hilarious, and um, I don't have nearly enough to do with him in this film. Um, but it's been great just sort of hanging out with him, getting to know him. And, uh, yeah, and Luke, who's just perfect as Gaston, really. Yeah, I, I mean, just to hear Audra McDonald sing live for a couple of days was, was pretty cool. Um, and, you know, she brings uh, an amazing wealth of talent to, uh, to that song, Days in the Sun, actually, is, you know. And um, and seeing them all sort of done up in their um, you know really extravagant costumes, I think her her wig alone is is one of the masterpieces of this film. Um, and uh, and she has this wonderful dog that um, accompanied her, and Stanley Tucci, and you know, again uh, an epic wig um, in the opening sequence, and um, and some quite special teeth going on as well. Um, yeah, just a really really fun bunch, and. Um, and I think, you know, when everyone was together in their human form, um, there, there was a, a real sense that, you know, we were doing something that was, that was fun, that everyone was really excited about. Yeah, I, th I think, um, you know, I hope that we will do justice to, you know, the, the love that people have for the animated film, but, you know, that people felt that we've, uh, you know, that we've taken it on, moved it on a bit, brought something fresh to it, brought a few new songs to it. I hope they like those. And... Um, yeah, I hope that you know it's uh, it, you know it becomes another classic really that that families enjoy and that um, that kids enjoy and get them sort of engaged with the with the fairy tale again because it is a great it is one of the great fairy tales I think.